Russell, the supposed capacity of the Judeo-Christian God to know the future is an important part of the theology. And yet scientists tell me that that is physically absurd, and indeed philosophers say it's a logical contradiction in terms of causation and all sorts of things. Uh, how important is this to your theology? Speaking as a scientist, can God know the future? I, I've certainly come across uh, many, many theologians, professional theologians, who, who don't accept that God knows the future. And, and, and they, 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 like the philosophers, think that it, it's a logical uh, impossibility. As a physicist, I have absolutely no difficulty at all. I, 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 as a physicist, find it much easier to believe this than, than a theologian does. And the reason is, is very simple, um, well, comparatively simple. Um, it, it really goes back to Einstein's theory of relativity. Um, without going into the details, essentially uh, what, what Einstein was saying is that space and time are much closer to each other than, than one would normally think. You know, one normally thinks of a three-dimensional space, you know, up and down, sideways, and backwards and forwards, and time is something you know, quite, quite different, and that things evolve in time as it goes up the, the time axis, okay? Now, what Einstein says is that is quite wrong, and what you're actually dealing with is uh, a situation where time is welded to the other three, so that's, that's, that's the sort of situation. It's a bit of a cheat because those four fingers are all supposed to be at right <laughs> angles to each other and that's a physical impossibility to demonstrate it hurts to do impossible things. But anyway, if, if you get a, forget about the angles, you know, that is how we see things. Uh, uh, Einstein said something along the lines of henceforth we must uh, we, we no longer deal with a three-dimensional space evolving in time. Reality is a four-dimensional space-time. All right? So what that means is that uh, space and, and time are all existing like that. Um, it means, for example, that just as um, at, at one point in time, like this instant now, all of space exists, and we're happy to accept that, it also means that at this point in space, all of time exists. It's harder to accept. That's very hard to accept. That, that, that the, the moment we, we sat down here exists. The moment we eventually get up and go somewhere else, that also exists. But this is what, what it tells us because, you know, that point there on my finger represents us sitting down. That point next to it is us sitting here now. And that point a bit further along is when we eventually get up. It, 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 it's all there. And in some sense, all of this exists. All instances of time exist on the same footing. Now, that is a real wrench because customarily we think that events that have happened in the past, they used to exist, but they don't exist any longer. Just our memories of them. That's right which is part of the present. All that yes. exists yes. is the present instant, and the future doesn't exist Don't. yet. Okay. Um, this picture says no. It all exists on the same footing. The fundamental question is, is that a wonderful mathematical structure and someplace between metaphor and mathematical abstraction, or is that a true description of actual reality? Okay. Um, he here you get, get something of, of, of a disagreement. Um, uh, that there are indeed uh, a minority view, but, uh, but some physicists don't like what we call the block universe. Yeah, it's simply, a block. Be simply because you know, our subjective experience of, of time is so different from, from, from this, you see, and so they think it's just some kind of mathematical construction. Um, I don't see how they can, can maintain that for the simple reason that it is certainly incontrovertibly a fact that as part of relativity theory, uh, two observers who are in relative motion cannot agree about the simultaneity of events that are separated by a distance. What that means is that you now we're sitting here, all right, 
And as far as we're concerned, at this particular instance of time, uh, over in New York, there is a man who is climbing some stairs and he's got his foot on the first step. Now, according to an astronaut flying overhead at high speed, his conception of time is different. At this instant of time, same instant of time, the man in New York has got his foot on the second step. So we don't agree as to what is happening in New York at this instant of time. Now, if you try to subscribe to the old idea that all that exists is what exists at the present instant, you are in deep trouble because two observers don't agree as to what is happening at the present instant in New York. Okay. okay. Let's so this, but, but the block university idea is fine. The man with his foot on the first step and the second, they both, all of it exists. All that's at stake here is which particular existent event in New York you choose to label with the same time as, as we label the present instant here. Okay, let's take this block universe yeah. that physicists mostly agree with yeah. and say, what does that mean as far as God's point of view? Well, as far as God's point of view, I would say, as, as a religious believer, is that although, although it, it's, we, we think of God as being imminent, meaning that God is featured along that time axis, you know, that, that's before I prayed to him and that is after I prayed to him. Okay, so God is, is in there. Nevertheless, the God we're interacting with there has got this transcendent overview. He can look down upon four-dimensional reality in the same way as I'm looking down on my four fingers here. So he can take in the whole, the whole span. And I think that that is a very important part of, of Christian belief, that the God I pray to in time is a God who knows the future and therefore is in a position to know what is best for me, which might be saying to me, no, Russell, I know you're asking for that, but you don't know what you're asking for, mate. You know? Well, I should tell you that most of your fellow physicists who are believers do not agree with a block universe in which the, the future is known to God in this one instant but really see that God is more in time and that is, uh, uh, and, and that therefore the future is more open. I, I, I think that on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, um, how, you, how you live your life, how I live my life, Yes, I, I, I do think of God as being in time. That, that is no, that, not, that's not, the perspective. I'm not that, talking about the experiential factor. I'm okay. talking about the, the hardcore bad word, metaphysics, mm -hmm. of, of, of what God's experience is, the, what God's mental life is all about, that God's mental life is not seeing a block universe where every event in time coexists in some way, but rather that God lives temporally with us in, in seeing uh, an open future in the past indeed is in the past. Maybe God has perfect memory, but it's a memory of the past as opposed to existing events. Well, you know, uh, uh, as, uh, as I've just said, uh, that, that's all very well to express that, that prejudice, that gut feeling yeah. that, you know, you, you don't like. Nobody, I don't like this idea, <laughs> you know. But, but my physics forces me because I do not see the alternative. If I, if I don't say that all of it exists, what am I going to put in its place? What do I say is happening in New York now? The guy with the first step on, you know, foot, foot on the first step or the second step. It doesn't make sense to say that all that exists is what's happening at the present time. It doesn't make sense. But can we go from there to the reality of God's mental life? I, I, would, I would say that my appreciation of this certainly makes it easier for me to accept that God has foreknowledge because I know that in some sense, and don't press me as to in what sense, in some sense the future exists. All God has to do is to find a way of looking at it. And for a God, I don't think that's too difficult. Okay, let's now give you that assumption and go on to the next step. Yeah. Assuming God does know that, 
some way. What does that imply about our free will and oh, the okay. deterministic view that if God knows the future, doesn't that uh, make the future uh, settled and therefore our ability to change it is certainly seems limited? Okay. It's not a very good analogy, but it's the best I can do, okay? Here am I, and you're God, okay? So here I am interacting with you in time, all right? It's a hard now, role for me to play, but I'll try. Yeah, okay, okay. Now, in, you know, I don't know, uh, half an hour's time, an hour's time, whatever it might be, you're going to have the advantage over me in that you're going to be able to see the tape of our our recording, okay? You're going to be able to select the beginning part, the end part, you can go back to the beginning. and You, you have complete control over seeing the whole of our conversation. Show you one part and you know what's going to follow and so on, okay? You've got all that information. That is you in transcendental mode. All right. So, you know what's going to happen on that tape. Does that mean that we are now looking at a tape which is showing robots acting in a deterministic way? The answer is emphatically no, because what you have knowledge of is a tape showing our free will actions and, and, and our complete freedom to be ourselves. Interesting analogy. <laughs> well, okay. Um, and, and, and I think it is a rather nice analogy because the transcendental God looking at the tape is looking at himself, the imminent God <laughs> interacting with the people. There. Let me ask you another question. I'm going to think about that one. Mm -hmm. I promise you I will. I promise <laughs> you I'm going to think about that. But uh, let me ask you another one. And that is, if God is not in time himself, using the inappropriate agenda, and can see this block universe, is it then impossible for you as a believer in your actions or in your prayer to affect God. Because if you're not in time, you can't change. If you can't change, you can't affect God. Doesn't that make God very remote? You are still God, okay? Have I affected you in this discussion? Yes. Okay. When you see the tape of our discussion, you will see yourself being affected by me. Now, I like the first time this analogy came up. This time, You're not my, liking my it much gut longer. feels it's weaker. <laughs> uh, I felt it's pretty strong the first time. I feel it's weaker now uh, because you are affecting me in time. You are affecting mm -hmm. me in time. Yeah. And I am in time and being affected, and then I see the record of that. I'm not sure that analogy uh, holds at all, because the initial event that you will be doing with God is not in time, not in God's time, because God doesn't have time. God some somehow has to know in one instant everything that you will have done, and therefore, although I, I think the argument around free will is an interesting one. The argument of how you can affect God is, is a weak one. The, the argument from analogy, you know, it, it always falls down. Sure, sure. It always sure. falls down, and that, that, that's the best but way. But it's to fun. It, it, it's fun, and I, I, think it, I think it does, it at least gives a warning to us mm. not to put onto God our own limitations. Just because we can't take in the whole of time doesn't mean to say that it's impossible to someone, someone like God. It, 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 it's really a warning to us to, you know, to, to keep an open mind. And I think the whole idea of, of God being able to take in the whole of time is, is a very attractive one in, in, in the following sense that um, if that is this four-dimensional block universe, what, what, is, what is my representation in here? My representation is a line, what we call a world line. That's the technical term, world line, which, which goes from birth, where, where I was born at the instant of time I was born, that's the four coordinates, 
through this particular incident and to, to, to my eventual death somewhere at some point in the future, okay? So it, it's a world line which traces out the whole of my history, okay? That is reality. That is the overview that God has. My, my childhood is as real and as near to God as I am at the present time. Now, I, when it comes to the resurrection, what is God going to resurrect? We, we tend to think, well, he will resurrect us as, as we are at the moment that we die. You know, heaven's going to be full of old people, you know. Is that true? Some people end up with Alzheimer's. Is that the kind of person that's going to be resurrected? I don't see why that should be. If God has access to the whole of the life, wouldn't he prefer perhaps to resurrect the time before the Alzheimer's? Perhaps there was, was, a, was a time when a person believed in God and then they lost their faith at some later stage. Perhaps God sees it as being sad to lose the part where there was a relationship. So uh, the, the theologian Moltmann has, has come up with this idea that, that what is resurrected is the whole of one's life, not just how we are at the end of one's life, the whole of one's life. And I find that a deeply attractive idea, that heaven is not going to be full of just old fogies. 